Hey folks, good news. So I was able to um, derive the the equations for reaction wheels that are not on the principal axes. Um, I thought about it for a while and I realized, well, I told you guys on the last video that it was like a linear algebra problem and I thought about it a little bit more and I realized that I've actually done it before. So um, if you have reaction control thrusters, the uh, solution is actually identical to this reaction wheel derivation. So basically what you do is you instead of controlling the angular velocities, you actually control the uh, desired torque. So, you know, up here in this equation, you use a PD controller to control the angular velocities of the reaction wheels. But in this equation down here, what you do is you, uh, and this uh, looks like I've got a vector there and not there, so I need to fix that. But um, anyway, what you do is you essentially take the, uh, you know, the, the, the error between your angular velocities and then your error between your Euler angles. And then you uh, set that equal to like a, a desired torque. So this is like the torque that you want the satellite to do. And then um, what you do then is, is you basically set this equation up to equal the torque created by the reaction wheels, which is equal to this inertia matrix times the angular velocity times n hat. And if you, if you break out the alphas, you end up getting this big, big matrix here, which is a, a three rows and then n columns. Um, so it's, a, uh, it's an overactuated problem. So if, if you have three reaction wheels, this is a three by three matrix and you can just invert it. So you can just do J inverse. Um, but if you have like five reaction wheels or if, you know, um, or basically more than three, you have an infinite number of solutions. So you basically have like three control torques that you're trying to derive, trying to solve for, and then, um, you know, four reaction wheels, which is fairly common. Uh, so in, in order to solve that, unfortunately, you have to use, um, what, I, I'm not entirely sure if this is correct. I call it Lagrange's method. It's a, it's a number 29. Uh, oh wow, yeah, the, the, <laughs> that's kind of funny. The, uh, the reference is, is the actual Lagrange guy um, from, from 1811. Um, but basically what it is, and let me, sorry, let me get back to it. Uh, the, that's in the control, reaction wheel control. Um, what you do is you basically, um, you do Gauss's problem, which is where you solve the problem for a, uh, an overactuated system but then because you have more equations than unknowns, no, you have more unknowns than equations, right? You have more unknowns than equations, you have an infinite number of solutions, and so you have to make a constraint. And typically for these problems where I have more solutions than equations, or more unknowns than equations, what I do is I, I set up a minimization problem, and so I say, um, give me the solution where um, alpha transpose alpha is a minimum. And that's my constraint. And what you end up getting is uh, this solution here. You end up getting this big matrix, I call it J, um, bolded, J transpose, uh, JJ transpose inverse. Um, it's really similar to Gauss's problem for least squares regression, but least squares regression works if you have more equations than unknowns. And in this case, we have more unknowns than equations. And what I mean by that is we have three equations and um, NR unknowns, which is the number of the reaction wheels. Anyway, I've, uh, I've, I've coded this up already. So uh, first things first, I, I've uploaded this to the uh, aerospace mechanics PDF. So uh, these equations are on there for you to look at and you can tell me if there's any typos or anything that I need to go back and fix. Um, but I went and edited the code. And so I create this, this matrix here and uh, this J matrix. So it's like, you know, the inertia of the reaction wheel in the body frame times N1 and then N2 and then N3. And then um, what I do then is I do this uh, J, J transpose inverse JJ transpose. And I put a comment here and I said, hey, use this if you're using more than three reaction wheels. And then you can use this one if you're using uh, only three. Uh, just to make sure, uh, I made sure that this works for three reaction wheels. So you can just use this second equation. It will work no matter what. Um, but if you, I'm, I'm not sure if this poses any benefit. At least the, the math works out for both. Um, so right now I have the, uh, the reaction wheels all going along the principal axes of inertia. And the other thing that I changed was in here, rather than doing um, my alpha command, I did an end desired. And then I changed my gains. Instead of being 1 and 45, I take uh, KP and KD and I multiply it by the inertia of the reaction wheel. Um, but then down here, um, I, I take that J inverse matrix, which remember that J inverse matrix is uh, up here, 
um, and I multiply that by the uh, M desired. And so essentially, if it, what ends up happening is if uh, your, your N values are all ones, your JJ transpose basically just turns into the inverse of J. Um, that's kind of like it all kind of shakes out. But if uh, you go back and change this to, to 111, I'll do that in a second. Um, but the point is, is that the, the simulation still works with, uh, with this J inverse equation. Um, you can see the, uh, the magnet torquers bring the angular velocity down. And then once the reaction wheels kick in, the pitch and yaw uh, go to zero. And then the roll angle goes to, um, goes to 57 degrees or whatever, which is just about uh, one radian. Uh, anyway, so what I want you to do as well is I want you to take a look at these angular velocities. So these are the angular velocities of the three axes of X, Y, and Z. And uh, I should probably put a legend on here. Uh, let me go do that real quick before I forget, just on the fly. So Euler angles, angular velocity, current, angular accelerations. I got the legend on there. Why does it not, uh, why does it not pop up? That's, oh, that's the angular velocity. Okay, uh, so that's somewhere else. Um, angular velocity reaction. Okay, so that's a legend uh, x, y, and z. Okay, well, it, since since they're not labeled, we're just going to have to go by colors. So the red one is about five. The orange one is about zero, and the blue one is about negative five. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to find the code and I'm going to go to the reaction wheel parameters and I'm going to make the reaction wheel. So you're going to have two, one reaction wheel pointed on the x-axis, one pointed on the y-axis, and then the third one is pointed um, sort of like, you know, at a 45 degree angle at one axis, which is fairly common. Um, I will say that you have to make sure that's a unit vector. So I, I had to divide by the norm. And then the other thing I will say is that whenever you're making your three reaction wheels, you do need to make sure that you have what's called a triad. And what that means is that your three axes can make an orthonormal basis. Um, if you have a reaction wheel along the X axis and one along the Y, and then you have one like in plane, um, there's no way to control that third axis. So you, you need to make sure that if you uh, take your three axes, you can make uh, what's called an orthonormal basis. And uh, if you've taken linear algebra, that will make sense. Uh, if not, then uh, I guess you can post in the comments and I can point you towards some literature. Anyway, I'm gonna, uh, um, I'm gonna run this, so I'm gonna hit main. I'm gonna pause the code because I'm not gonna have you sit here and run the, and, and, and watch this. And then I'll, we'll come back when it's done. Okay, we're back. So the uh, simulation finished. And you'll notice that the Euler angles do the same. So they go to zero and the uh, pitch angle goes to one radian. But what has changed is the uh, angular velocity. So if we look at the angular velocity plot, um, they are different, right? So I think if I remember correctly, the, the red one was around five. I think the blue one was around zero and then the orange one or the yellow one was like negative five or the blue one was like negative five and the, and the yellow one was zero. That's right. Yeah. So you can see basically that the, uh, the Z axis one or the, the really, I need to change this from X, Y, Z to like one, two, three, um, because it's not, it's, you're, you can make them any axes you want. Um, you know, since I can pause and unpause the video, I mean, I, I can come back here. And I can say like, you know, call this one um, N2 and then make this one N and make this one N3 and that one N1 and then uh, and then run it again. I'll pause the video. So then in this case, you know, now look at the reaction wheel velocities like they're all over the place. But even though they've been completely flipped around, everything still works just fine. So this uh, linear algebra equation here really kind of takes care of everything. It's, it's really, it's really awesome. And I'm really excited that I got it to work. Um, so anyway, so I posted the um, explanation of the equation uh, to the aerospace mechanics PDF. I did not put the derivation in there. Um, that's something I could probably include later. I probably won't make a YouTube video about it. I'll probably just, you know, put it in text and push it. Um, but now I think, I think I'm pretty much done. I think this completes the series. So you basically have 
um, a reaction wheel model, a star tracker model, and a control law for the reaction wheels that work for any orientation of reaction wheels, which I think is pretty powerful. So um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, series. And then, uh, like I said, if you, if you have any other requests for a video series or, um, or edits to this code, just let me know. And I guess I'll see you all in the next one.